The SSL G bus compressor. Well, what does a G stand for? God, good, great, the gaffer, the governor. Let's find out. Hi, welcome to the Crates Motel. My name's Conan. In today's video, we're going to be looking at plug-in emulations of the SSL G bus compressor. Now, love it or hate it, it's a sound-defining compressor. We all know the sound that it imprints on pop tracks, hip hop. And what this video is going to be about, it's not going to be a comparison video. I'm not going to be telling you what I think is the best SSL plug-in emulation. I'm not going to be comparing it to the hardware because I don't have hardware to compare it to. It's really, the point of the video is, I've had a few questions. People have said to me, you know, how do you use the SSL? What SSL emulation do you use? Because I do use the G-Bus in pretty much every mix that I do. And I have done since the 80s when I was using the hardware. So what this video is really gonna be about is, it's just gonna be me running through all the different G-Bus compressor emulations that I use. I use them in different situations at different times. I'm not gonna be saying which one's the best. I'm not gonna be precisely scientifically comparing them to each other. It's really just gonna be kind of how they sound to give you some inspiration on maybe what bus compressor you wanna completely avoid or what bus compressor you really like the sound of and just put them all in one place. Let's jump in. So here we are in Studio One. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zip through all of these SSL emulations that I own and that I use on occasions. I'm gonna have pretty much the same setup not all of them have wet dry and not all of them have side chains. So like I said, it's not a comparison video because it would be unfair to compare this version with oversampling, wet dry, side chain, etc. And you know, an extended amount of ratios compared to some of the other ones which don't have that. So I don't want to compare them. So what I'm gonna do as close as I can, I'm gonna have them on the same settings, which will be attack 30, release point one. I will use the wet and dry. I will have the sidechain filter on around about 150 if they do have it. Ratio will be on about two. I'm not gonna play with the oversampling. What I will say about this version is I do tend to have it on oversampling two. I just like what it does. It has a very slightly different sound to it and I like it. I find four a bit too much, two's fine sometimes off. It depends. I mean, listen to your plugins, you know, don't be fooled into thinking, oh, it has four oversampling, quick put it on four oversampling. That must be the best because it's the highest number. It doesn't work like that. Use your ears, trust your ears. If you like what it sounds like with no oversampling, then don't use any oversampling. It's, you know, it's that simple. Don't do anything by default. Don't be fooled by higher numbers, etc. you know. Now, another thing I'm gonna say as well is that not all of these have auto gain. I'm, I, I think maybe one or two of them do. So when I go in and out of bypass up here, it's not always gonna be exactly the same level. I'll try and get it as close as I can. But like I said, this isn't a video where I'm trying to compare different versions and say this one's better, that one's better. I'm not trying to compare it to the hardware and say it's closer or not close. I don't do any of that stuff in my videos. It's not scientific. So I'll just get it as close as I can. I'll roughly have them on the same settings as much as possible. And it'll just give you a place where you can listen to a whole bunch of different SSLs and make up your mind which ones you like, which ones you don't like at all. So we're gonna kick off with SSL's native one. I do actually have two different versions, the newer one and the older one. This is the newer one, and let's have a listen. Also, just quickly, I'm gonna go for around about two decibels of gain reduction throughout. Now that's a little bit more than what I would normally do on the mix bus. It's probably closer to what I would do on a drum bus or on some vocal buses. Um, but, but you know, we're looking at this as a mix bus compressor today. So I'm gonna have it round about two, just to, so you can hear what the glue is doing. You know, the, the whole point of the SSL compressor was to, to imprint some glue. I wouldn't run it that high normally, but if I run it at 0.5, to one, which is what I would normally run it on. It's gonna be difficult to hear unless you've got really, really good headphones or really good monitors. And, you know, <clears throat> I, you know, it, I just think at two decibels is kind of a good compromise between it doing too much and it not doing enough for you to hear. So we're gonna aim for two decibels gain reduction throughout.
So quite transparent, nice bit of glue, doesn't really affect the high end, affects the low end a tiny amount. Now that's something I want you to do when you listen through each one of these, is listen to what the SSL does to the low end. It's notorious for affecting the low end, the actual hardware is, and so you have to be a bit careful how far you push it. You, you know, and there's the danger of losing low end to your mix, which is not really something you necessarily want to do. Now nowadays, in the box, obviously, we can add an EQ after and we can bring back some of that low end that we might lose on the compressor. We didn't always have that luxury on the hardware, but you know, we're not looking at the hardware today. So listen to what it does to the low end and the high end. Obviously the mid-range as well, but they do, you know, the different versions I've got here will affect the high end slightly differently. And some of the versions really affect the low end. Some of them don't really affect it at all. This one's quite transparent, it's quite silky, and it's got a nice sort of smooth sound to it. So moving on to the older version of the SSL Native. This one I don't use as much, but I do like the sound to it. I like using it on acoustic instruments and I've used it on acoustic mixes where there's just a singer and a guitarist. It's got a nice kind of character to it. It imprints a bit more of a character than the last version, which is a bit more transparent. It's nice, it doesn't have the oversampling, it doesn't have as many options as the newer version. But, you know, like I said, it stays on my computer because I do still use it sometimes. I don't know why the needle is so active. It's very, very jumpy. I did actually w used to work on a hardware version that had a very jumpy needle like this, so maybe it's modeled on that particular hardware version, don't know. But it's, um, it is, so just kind of ignore it. We know roughly around about here, it's about two decibels. So as you can hear, this one is a little bit more grabby than the last version. If you were to compare them side by side, that's 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 nice. The uh, I seem to remember that the attack on this one really kills transients very very quickly. I I wouldn't necessarily say this is particularly accurate, but you know we don't have to look at the numbers. You can do it by your ears. Each different version of the hardware is going to be slightly different, and you know how this reacts on hardware is going to be slightly different on every single version because they're not identical. So, you know, maybe they modeled this on a version which was a little bit grabbier and hit transients a little bit harder with the attack. But like I said, I do use this version sometimes, not as much as the other version. So this version is an emulation from Analog Obsession. It's the first of two. They do the Buster and also you can see here the Buster SE, which I'll show you in a moment. I think the SE means special edition. This one's quite basic. But it does have a side chain, does have a mix knob, does have an extended uh, ratio settings, which you know the, the original SSL hardware doesn't have. It's nice, it, it, it's quite transparent. I do use it uh, and it's free. I mean, this is the great thing about Analog Session. This, this guy codes some really, really good plugins. They're all free. Go and visit him online. Feel free to drop him a little bit of money through PayPal to become a pa Patreon member or whatever you know. But he does do it for free. It's your choice. But he does code some really, really good plugins. Uh, most of his plugins, I think if you click the Analog Obsession sign, there's oversampling. Doesn't look like there is on this version. Um, you also have the option of an external sidechain as well. So let's have a quick listen to this one. So it is quite gluey this one, it does affect the high end a little bit and uh, it doesn't seem to affect the low end too much but it's a nice smooth sound, it has got a bit of character, it does imprint a bit of character, it's, it, it, like I said it is quite gluey, it is quite SSL sounding, uh, how you typically expect an SSL sound to be which is you know it has a kind of silky glue to it. So it's nice and it's free, so let's have another quick listen. Because this does imprint quite a character, I probably would have the mix knob pulled back to about 75 to 70%. But let's just listen to it on 100% wet. So 
So yeah, nice version. So this is another version uh, by Analog Obsession. Uh, this one does have oversampling. If you can see, if you click Analog Obsession, that's pretty much the same on all of his plugins. Uh, not the last one, obviously, but yeah, if you click that, you get some oversampling. This one has some more sidechain options and some options to just kind of boost the compressor after compression to so maybe bring back some of the low end you might lose. It has some other options here which add a little bit of grit. We're going to leave those alone. Set up pretty much the same. You have a wet and dry here as well, and you have extended options on the ratios. Now this one does affect the low end quite a lot, but I do really like it because other than affecting the low end, it's, it's got quite a transparent silkiness to it. That doesn't really make sense because it does sound like it's imprinting something. So it does imprint something, but it, it, it's without these engaged, uh, maybe with the oversampling as well, it's, it, it, it doesn't really affect the mid range and, and the high end too much. It, it has a transparent glue to it. Again, that doesn't really make sense, does it? I think you know what I'm saying. What I'm really trying to say is that it doesn't imprint too much of a character on, on your actual signal. It's just a little bit of an effect on the low end. So this is a plugin by a company called DMG Audio. Now it's not, when you look at it, you don't instantly think SSL, but it is kind of their version of the SSL. It serves the same kind of purpose, and I do use it where I use an SSL sometimes. And I've seen other people consider it, you know, you know, they say they consider it to be the DMG SSLG compressor. So, you know, again, I've got the release set up to about one millisecond, about 30 here, ratio of about two. You have more options, some different curves. You, you have the side chain, stereo link, auto gain is actually on this one. So there's some more options. It's a little bit more digital. The GUI is obviously, you know, not an emulation of the SSL. Some people like that, some people don't. All I really care about is how it sounds. And I do use this version sometimes. So as you can hear, this one's got auto gain on the makeup. So you can't hear the effect so much. This is very transparent, but it has a real nice glue to it. It's really, really good on house music, club music, hip hop, where you want that compressed glue sound, but you don't really want the signal to be, the sound to be affected too much, the low end not to be affected, the high end, the mid range, that kind of thing. This one doesn't do it. So if you do want an SSL, which is quite transparent, then the track comp from DMG is a good option. Probably the one that I would use the most if I'm working on some really pumpy house music um, because it doesn't affect the low end. If anything, it kind of rounds the low end out. Not sure how it does that. Maybe some harmonics or something in the plugin. Uh, not exactly sure. Haven't put it through Plugin Doctor. But it's, it's a good option and it's one that a lot of people overlook because it doesn't look like an SSL. But believe me, it sounds like one. So the next one we're going to look at is quite a well-known one from Plugin Alliance. Let's just switch that to two. Uh, it's a emulation of a mod of the SSL G bus compressor. I think it was in the late 70s, possibly early 80s. So it was a modification made uh, at Townhouse Studios. It's quite gritty. It does have a lot of character to it. I love using it on lo-fi stuff and hip-hop stuff. And, you know, it has a nice... It just it has a nice sound to it. it. It imprints something very nice. And so I do use this one quite a lot, like I said, on hip hop. Now this one, what quite often happens with glue compression is you lose a little bit of the, the high end. Um, and especially if there's a lot going on with hi-hats, that kind of thing. But what this one does I would imagine probably with saturation and some harmonics is it 
kind of actually almost brightens up the the the, the high end, the hi hats around about five k. Five k is a really nice frequency to bring clarity to a whole song. It's it's a it's a frequency that a lot of mastering engineers, myself included, will look at on a track. Do I need? Does the track need some more clarity? Then I'll look at five k first, between four five and you know five five that kind of area. Um, and so this is a really nice mix bus compressor where it does add a bit of saturation, some harmonics, and just bring out the clarity in that kind of area in the mix. Just listen to the, the hi-hats and you'll probably be able to notice it. So this is the version from IK Multimedia, part of their T-Rex package. Uh, very reasonably priced. This is another nice one. I've been using this one for a long time. There's been various updates over the years. Um, but I think, it, yeah, I think it might have been one of the first ones, apart from the Waves one, which I, I used regularly. Uh, it's 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 got, again, with the grit, you can imprint some nice kind of saturation to it and it does have a nice sound. It's not really very transparent. It does affect the low end quite a lot. You'll notice with the grit, listen to the claps in the song. That's where you'll notice it the most. It just suddenly kind of it adds a bit of grit, I guess, probably with saturation and harmonics. So this is the SSL G-Bus emulation from Overloud. I don't see this one used as much. Overloud makes some really, really cool plugins, and I love the fact that you can personalize them. Uh, I think it's here. Yeah, you can add a scribble. I like that. It's it's a bit, you know, it's a bit childish, but I like the idea of having a sticker with the Crates Motel on it. So this one also has mid-side option, which they don't all have. And you obviously have the wet dry, you have the side chain, that kind of thing. But this, this is a nice one. I, <coughs> excuse me. I forget about this one too often and I'll be looking through my my SSLs, you know, what one should I, and then I'll see this one and I think, oh yeah, I always forget the Overloud one. All of their compressors are great, in fact all of their plugins are. Um, but this, yeah, like I said, this is one that does get overlooked and, and it's, it's great, it's got a really nice sound to it, R nice grabby, silky glue sound. I seem to remember this one is nice when you push it with the ratio a bit higher. Yeah, that has a really nice rounded glue sound to it. Doesn't really affect the bottom end too much. And it, it warms things up slightly, which I like. It, it does affect the high end, but it does it in a nice way, kind of the way that maybe tape saturation would have a nice roll off around about kind of very shallow from around about 12K upwards. Let's just listen to it on the vocals a bit later in the track. Yeah, so, you know, I'm thinking it now, I, I should try not to overlook this one because it has got a really nice sound to it. 
sounds really really nice on club music particularly on this track so yeah look out for this one i i i have i don't they don't get as much coverage you know maybe their marketing is not quite as good as somebody like waves or universal or plug-in alliance you know which have a massive marketing machine and overloud doesn't uh, and they do get overlooked, but they do make some great plugins, uh, some other great compressors, and some other really, really good emulations as well um, of some uh, some Dolby units and stuff that I use quite often. Um, but really, really good stuff. And this is a this is a really nice emulation. So this is the Cytomic, the the famous one, the Glue. I think it comes as a default plugin with Ableton. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I think that's the first place that I saw it as a as a plugin. Um, it's one that a lot of people use. It, it, it's it has a very typical SSLG bus sound. It imprints a little bit too much of a character on on a source for my liking for the mix bus. But I do use it on drums, and I do use it on if I have a group of electric guitars, almost like a wall of sound kind of kind of affair. I will use it on four and I will push it to about four dB gain reduction and it has a really, really nice kind of sound to it. But let's stick with the mix bus settings and let's have a listen to this one. Now, one thing I have noticed about this plugin is when I go in and out of bypass using the Personas bypass, there is actually a little bit of a click, which is not not good for a plugin. I haven't had it on any of these other ones, only on this Cytomic one. I don't know whether that's just my computer today. Could be just my computer today. I haven't noticed it before, but you know, it, 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 it's 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 a good option. It has a bunch of different options here for oversampling that kind of thing. There's a lot to this plugin. Um, and oh yeah, obviously you can change the size, oversampling it. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff there. Uh, it, it, I mean, it's it's a great emulation. It's a well-known one, um, but I just just for some reason I don't tend to reach for it. it. It is quite. It's not very transparent, so I don't tend to go for it on the mix bus unless I want some added character. Some people might completely disagree with me and say they think it's completely transparent, but I've always found that the Cytomic you know to live up to its name glue and it is very gluey it very it really rounds things off you know even when you have the attack on 30. So this is the bus presser from PSP again it doesn't look like an SSL but it is their SSL version basically I use a lot of plugins from PSP I have done for many years 20 years 20 plus years maybe even and this is a nice you know this is a nice SSL style emulation has a few extra things on it that you don't get on the other ones some extra ratio options has the side chain has a different kind of style um, parallel compression set up here but it's nice it quite quite beefy doesn't really affect the low end too much Now what I've used PSP for years for, just drifting off slightly, is they're very good at doing warmth. I mean, the Vintage Warmer uh, plugin by them is a very, very famous plugin, which people use for kind of tape saturation, roll off, that kind of thing. And this version of the SSL does introduce a nice bit of warmth. It has, again, has that kind of tape roll off kind of feel to it. Um, and you know, again, it's another one that I overlook and whenever I use it, I think, oh, I really should use this more often. The PSP do some really, really good plugins and they're, you know, very reasonably priced and, you, you know, just, just some really, really good stuff, some really, really good emulations. So here we are with the Waves version. This is probably the version that a lot of you are familiar with. 
I've used it since it first came out. It's been updated a few times and I still use it. You know, there's a, there's a ton of other versions, uh, different companies that make them now, obviously. I think Waves is one of the first, but I do still go back to the Waves one. It, it has a particular sound to it, which, you know, which I'm very used to. And I, and I think that's why a lot of engineers still go back to Waves plugins overall, because it's a sound that they've got used to. I mean, I still use the Waves L2 limiter. I've, over 20 years I've used that plugin now. And I still use it because I know what it's gonna do. And with their SSL bus compressor, I know what it's gonna do. It has a particular way of compressing the middle of the signal, but leaving the sides maybe more than another SSL emulation might do. And, and that's really good for some tracks. You know, you, you, you want that on some tracks. You want the, the mid range to have a bit of glue to it, which gives it the impression that it's come forward, but also have the, the sides still opened up. And you don't have a mid side option on this, but it almost sounds as though there is a mid side option. Uh, and that's why I like it. That's why I go back to it. So if you just try and concentrate on when I bring it in and out of bypass, what it's doing to the side of the signal um, in terms of the, the, the it, it, it's, it's compressing, it sounds like it's compressing the middle of the signal, if I'm making sense. So everything else opens up. And of course, the great thing is when you do have a compressor that does that and it has a mix knob on it, you can just dial it back a bit. You know, if it's too much, you, you like the effect that it's doing, but it just sounds a little bit too much in the mix. The great thing about modern times is you can, I mean, when I used to think of the trouble that we used to go through sometimes to do parallel compression in the 80s with hardware units, and now, you know, most plugins have the ability to do parallel compression, parallel EQ, parallel saturation is, is endless. So, you know, they're there to be used, utilize it. You know, there's, there's no reason why you can't push this into like eight decibels of gain reduction to get some character in it and then just dial it back. So this is the version from Slate Digital. It's another quite old plugin, but I know so many engineers that swear by this version of the SSL. You know, I, I, again, I don't want to get into comparing it to the hardware because I don't have the hardware to compare it to. And most of the people that you read online in forums don't have the hardware to compare it to either. They'll just say, oh, it sound, doesn't sound analog. Oh, it sounds like, and you know, they might have heard it once in a studio. And that's why I don't like to compare things when I don't have the actual hardware unit to compare it to. So that's why so I'm not going to do that. But saying that, I do know a lot of engineers that say that this sounds a lot like the hardware. But then I also know a lot of engineers that say it doesn't. It's one, again, that I forget about. Maybe because it's an old plugin. Maybe because, you know, I don't own an awful lot of Slate uh, plugins. So they're not at the forefront of my mind. But it has got a nice sound to it. They also do a great version of the Focusrite um, compressor, bus compressor, which is, which is really, really good, which I do use quite a lot. Um, but this is this is a decent emulation. This is a decent SSL style plugin, and you've got side chain and you've got parallel compression here. It, it's very very simple, but it it, it has a good sound. Yeah, let's just push this one a little bit more and just dial it back. So this is by a company called Furcomp. Now they do do a free version, um, which is also very, very good, a lot more basic. So this is an SSL style compressor. It doesn't look like an SSL, but you know you can see from uh, the ratio, you know you can just see from the way that it is, that it is an SSL style. And a lot of people, I mean, I know Luca Pretolesi uses this. I've seen him use this in videos and he, he really likes it. And it was actually him that turned me on to it. And it's it's good. I mean, you know, it it has a lot of this VCA mode is really really nice. You have the Delta Listen, which is really really handy. Uh, it has look ahead options. It has a lot more options that you don't normally get on SSL emulations. Um, 
Oh, I forgot about the, F. the that VCA mode is awesome. Anyway, um, but it but it's it has a nice sound to it, and you know it, it's it's one that I do reach for. It's kind of a little bit of a secret weapon because I don't see too many people talk talking about it. But check check out Fur Comp Two, uh, and check out the free version. Yeah, this is, I remember what I like about this, and I think, and again, it was Luca who kind of drew my attention to it. It brings everything in like that. It's kind of like it's grabbed it from behind and pulled it forward. Um, so it brings, I mean, if you try and listen to what the vocals do, it is subtle, but when, when I bring the compressor in, listen to the vocals, they kind of just, it has that glue effect, but it doesn't really sound like it's gluing. It, it just makes it sit really nicely in the mix, and it's like wrapped around. I, sorry, my my explanations of, of audio sometimes are a bit nuts, but that's what it feels like. It's that's what it sounds like it's doing to me. It, it has this really nice grabbing kind of surrounding sound to it. Yeah, focus on the on the vocals. It draws them into the center of the track a lot more, and it, it creates a nice focus on them. And, and, and you know that's a nice, uh, subtle part that a good bus compressor can do is it can focus things. That's the whole point of it. You know that's the point of gluing is 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 giving everything a bit of co cohesion, but also helping focus on the important parts of the mix. So the last on the list is the UAD Solid State Logic G Bus emulation. Uh, the reason why I've left this till last is because, you know, obviously I don't think this is available on their native plugin list. Um, if it is, then I'm sorry I'm mistaken. But otherwise, you do actually have to run the hardware to, to be able to use this version. So, you know, obviously you can see this one probably looks the most like an actual SSL G compressor. Um, they have a few extras on here that aren't on the hardware, the sidechain, the mix knob, that kind of thing. Let's have a listen to this one. has a very natural sound to it and uh, it also has this headroom down here which is really useful I have to be honest this is the one that I tend to use the most it has a nice natural sound to it it does imprint a bit of character and as far as my memory serves me it is the closest to the G bus compressor that I used um, for quite a few years it might not sound like any other G-Bus compressor on the planet, but it's close to how I remember my one sounding. And and I just, I, I know what I'm gonna get out of this one. It, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, again, it's about being familiar with a plugin and knowing what it's gonna do. And I've used this one on so many mixes that, you know, I, I almost, it's, all, it's almost become part of my sound in my mixes. You know, I, I kind of, feel strange if it's not there and I apply it very very early on in, in, in a mix. I tend to only have uh, well a lot less probably about that and I might even bring that back to about 80%
side chain filter i tend to have it set around about there yeah that's pretty much maybe 140 depending on the content but it is the one that i do tend to use the most just purely uh, maybe out of i'm just familiar with it and I, I like what it does and i know exactly what it does and it, it's simple it's kind of I, I you know i know i'm using the mouse but i kind of with this one i feel like i've got my my fingers on the original hardware you know and and, and you know people laugh about that and people say oh it doesn't matter what the gui looks like but you know to some of us sometimes it does you know sometimes it's nice to have something to look at and reminisce about and kind of get that feeling that you're using the original hardware and there's nothing wrong with that you know don't let people tell you that that's, that's a bad thing if that's your thing you know then then go with it you know if if it inspires you and that's what it's that's what it should be about you know if if looking at a particular gui doesn't give you any inspiration but look at another gui gives you some inspiration and you also like the sound of it obviously then what's wrong you know that's 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 a good thing I don't use this one because I like the look of it. I just want to say that. I like using this one probably the most. It's the one I reach for the most because it does what I what I need it to do on most of the mixes that I do. So it tends to be my start off point. You know, and I do tend to compare other SSL emulations to this one. So I'll, you know, I'll think, um, okay, I'm not going to use the UAD version because I want one that's got a little bit less... Um, that maybe affects the low end a little bit more and then i'll think to myself well i know that the ik multimedia version affects that affects it a little bit more you know it's so it's I, I guess i use it as a as a benchmark so there you have it very quick you know i didn't concentrate on any one of them too much i just really wanted to put in one place a whole bunch of SSL emulations for the G bus compressor so that somebody can run through it quickly and go, oh, okay, I don't like that one. I do like that one. Oh, I'll listen to that one. I'll demo that one. Just put them all in one place. Like I said, it's not definitive. There isn't every single plugin uh, emulation of the SSL there, but they're all ones that I use. And I do use every single one of those at some point, some more than others. As I said, the UAD one I tend to use, I tend to go for first, that's my benchmark. And then if that isn't doing what I want it to do, or if I want a particular character to it, I might reach for the townhouse in a particular situation, or I, or I might reach for the IK Multimedia or the Overloud. So I don't have a favorite. I, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to go there. I said I wouldn't gonna, go there and I'm not, I don't have a favorite. I honestly don't. They're all good. Um, demo them all if you can you know learn them and you know and there's probably some there that you hate and I hope there's some there that you'll like you know I mean that that was the point of the video so thanks for watching please subscribe for more mixing and mastering tutorials and reviews this is the Quakes Motel my name's Conan till next time